I still don't like it, but I understand it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. So YouTube team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Angry Raven here with another video. And in this video, we are here to review the Sean Wade trade uh, to the New England Patriots. Uh, as you all know from my first thoughts on it, from my initial reaction to it, I did not like it. I did not like it at all. Um, I still don't like it, but like I said, I do understand it. I understand why and what we're here to talk about today is the positives uh, from this trade for both sides. Uh, for the Ravens, for Sean Wade, for the Patriots, uh, and for everybody involved. Before we get into this, I got to say I appreciate y'all and I appreciate you all's respect. Uh, in the video, we talked about a lot of reasons why we didn't like this trade. Um, and But the fact that so many of y'all came through in the comment section, probably about like 99% of y'all came through and y'all shared your opinion on how you felt about the trade, whether you liked it or whether you didn't like it, but you shared your opinion respectfully. And like I always say, like we always talk about, no matter how we feel about whatever it may be, whether we all on the same page about something or we're not on the same page about something. The only thing, literally the only thing I care about is that we show each other respect. That's it. Nothing else matters. Doesn't matter if we like stuff together. Doesn't matter if we dislike stuff together. Doesn't matter if we agree or not. Like I said, respect at the end of the day. That's all I care about. I respect y'all. I appreciate y'all. And I love y'all. So thank you for that. Real quick, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Appreciate y'all. Thank you for showing extra support to the channel. Like I always say, if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. But if not, then don't go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. I love y'all. Now, Sean Wade. Let's, first, let's talk about the compensation. Uh, the Ravens received a seventh round pick in 2022. And they get a fifth round pick in 2023. So they get two additional draft picks over the next two years. Um, again, one, a seventh round pick, and then a fifth round pick. So that's not bad. That's not bad. Um, you get more ammo to make some moves with and whatnot over the next couple of years. Cool. Now, uh, one of the positives on this is that uh, I've seen a lot of people saying that Sean Wade, he probably was not going to make the 53-man roster and not only that but he also he wouldn't have cleared waivers he would not have cleared waivers because i and, and I, I remember i remember when we drafted sean wade and i remember so many people being so happy and so excited like oh man this guy's a steal this guy the pr the previous year not this last year but the previous year he was rated as one of the top cornerbacks uh in college football and whatnot i know uh, last year he had sort of an off year but just knowing his potential and the Ravens actually getting this guy in the fifth round, it was like, wow, I can't believe it. But I love it. And I'm with it. And the way that I viewed this move, I was like, oh, yeah, this is definitely a move for the future. For sure, it's for the future. And I, I love that. And I was excited about that. And of course, y'all know we, we had the interview with his father. Uh, his father dropped a lot of knowledge on us uh, in that interview. Dropped a lot of knowledge about Sean Wade, a lot of knowledge about his game, things that he was going through last season in a season where a lot of people feel like he struggled. He let us know about all of that stuff. Uh, and that was shout out to Sean Wade's father, Randy. Um, but now uh, he's gone. Now he's going to New England. And a guy that the Ravens had just picked up this year is gone. Now, my biggest thing, why I, I, I did not like it, like I said, every single year, we know as Ravens fans that this secondary, they get tested by health. The, the depth gets tested every single year because of health. It's a long season, even when it was 16 games, but now it's a 17 game season. So it's even longer. And NFL is a very physical game, as we all know. Uh, and the cornerback position, it takes a lot. Um, now, I know that because, of course, yes, Ravens have a lot of depth at corner right now. They do. And I love that. And I appreciate that about the Ravens. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Again, Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, Jimmy Smith, Tavon Young, Anthony Avent, 
Chris Westry, Nigel Warrior, Brandon Stevens, Ardarius Washington. Yes, those are all guys. Some of those guys are safeties too now, but those are all guys who Ravens can have play some cornerback. Whether it be inside corner, outside corner, the depth is great right now. And yes, I understand that Sean Wade, he was behind uh, most, if not all of those guys. So this is why I say I understand the trade. I understand it. I still didn't like it, but I understand the why. Now, another big positive about this trade uh, is for Sean Wade. One of those things, one of the biggest positives about it is that he's going to the New England Patriots. Now, I've seen so many people say, oh, man, why are the Ravens helping out the enemy? Why are they helping out the enemy? Listen, every single team in the NFL is the enemy. So whoever the Ravens trade, traded Sean Wade to or whoever they trade any player to is the enemy because they do not play for the Ravens. That other team. They do not play for the Ravens. The only time they would go, they would play with the Ravens would be them playing against the Ravens. There's only one Super Bowl winner. You, you don't share a Super Bowl trophy like, oh, hey, you want this trophy too? It's both of ours. Let's share. No, they can only be one. So with that being said, I don't mind that they traded him to New England. But the great thing about it, two great things about it. One is that he's being traded to an organization, to a team that knows how to get the job done. He's not being traded to a team where the organization is garbage, where they just, they do everything the wrong way. No, he's being traded to the New England Patriots. And they have a history. Uh, and even as much as some people may not like that history, you got to respect the history. You have to. So he's in a good situation. Now, something even better for him is that he has a much better chance and a much better opportunity to get playing time there than he did with the Ravens. Because this, what this situation seems like it was, was that you, the saying, you can never have too much of a good thing. And that ended up coming true with this because they had a lot of good corners. They got a lot of guys that's playing well. They got a lot of guys that's been doing their thing. Sean Wade, in my opinion, I think he would have been another one, but they, 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 they couldn't. They had too much. They had too much. They had too many corners, and you can't keep everybody. So um, it, it is another, another positive about this. And again, they, they could have cut him. They could have cut him. They could have released him, and that would have been, that would have sucked. But with the Ravens, what they did Instead of cutting him, instead of waving him, instead of releasing him, they traded him so they got something for him rather than nothing. So that, I, I again, understand. Didn't like the trade, don't like the trade, but again, I understand it. I understand it. So because if you got an extra whatever it may be, and you like, man, this is a good whatever it may be, but I don't need whatever it may be. And you feel like you're going to discard whatever it may be. Then it's better that you are able to get something for it rather than just tossing it away. I mean, even though with me, though, depending on what it is, I'll be ready to throw something away quick. And I wouldn't be worried if I got nothing for it, especially if it's something that I ain't using. But this is obviously a different scenario than stuff that I'm talking about. But anyway, um, the fact that the Ravens were able to get something for him uh, is great. Now, it's also been said that the Ravens, they have been getting calls about other cornerbacks as well. And you got to feel like it would be everybody besides uh, Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, uh, and Jimmy Smith. You got to feel like it would be everybody after those names. Marlon Humphrey, obviously, he just signed a deal with the Ravens, and everybody knows they're not getting rid of him. Marcus Peters, they know the Ravens not getting rid of him right now. Uh, and Jimmy Smith. I don't really think anybody would trade for Jimmy Smith at this point in his career uh, with him pretty much probably being in the last year of his deal. Now, uh, Tavon Young, I did not exclude him off that list because it, it could have been possible that people may call for Tay-Tay, maybe. But everybody else, uh, it's been said that people have been making calls about numerous Ravens cornerbacks. So Anthony Averett, who they gave a lot of praise to uh, in the press conference a few days back, and somebody who I... 
I thought was going to be traded. I didn't want him to be traded because, like, like y'all already know, I've been saying it for so long. Anthony Anthony Averett is right on the verge, man. He's so close to being a really good cornerback. He just got to work on tracking that ball, man. That's the, that's the only thing he got to work on. He got the speed. He he knows the stuff. He he don't be getting burnt or nothing like that. All he got to do is work on uh, finding the ball, and then he will be such a better cornerback. But anyway, when Wink was praising him, I, y'all know, I, I thought, I was like, oh, man, yeah, that's business. They're they getting ready to trade him. Uh-oh. But it didn't happen. Chris Westry, he, young guy, used to be on the Cowboys, obviously didn't work out there, but 6'4", got speed, and they see some potential in this guy. And I can understand why. But with Chris Westry, maybe they were getting calls about him. Somebody see a 6'4 corner moving around like that with that speed and all that and that physicality? Oh, man, who wouldn't give a call? Who wouldn't? And they could have also been calling on guys like Nigel Warrior, who was undrafted last year, or Darius Washington, who was undrafted this year. Uh, and, and just the, the list, it goes on. But with Sean Wade, uh, with him being at the bottom of that list, then I guess the Ravens were like, you know what? Like I, like I said, if, if, if we're not, not going to keep him on our roster, if, if we would waive him, then he would go to another team regardless. If we would cut him, then he would go to another team regardless. So you know what? Let's try to get something for him instead of just letting him go for free. So again, I understand it. Don't like it, but I do understand it and I respect it. And, and this, is, this is the unfortunate part of the business because it is a business. It is a business. And, and with it being a business, business decisions have to be made. You have to do what's best for business. And that's what Eric DeCosta and the Ravens felt like was best for business. Okay. So another thing, and something that we spoke about earlier as well with this trade, is that I was really um, eyeing the future uh, with Sean Wade uh, in this trade, especially after my guy Ham brought it up. Uh, about guys like a Jimmy Smith, guys like a Tavon Young. And of course, there's still other guys that could be that are on the Ravens roster right now that could be part of the future as well. But I feel like with Sean Wade, you have somebody fifth round pick. Uh, and, and the worst that I thought was going to happen to him this year, especially since the Ravens had so many cornerbacks, worst I thought would happen would be maybe a stash. Maybe they do an IR stash with him, sort of a red shirt year or whatnot. Let him sit it out and then come back next year and just be ready be that much more ready uh to take take everything on the following season um but with the future again with us again jimmy smith probably in his last year tay tay i think is probably in his last year with the ravens and again not because they're bad players because they're not but with them their injury history um and with tay tay his his high salary cap numbers especially since he's in his second contract I just think that the Ravens, I think they would look to to move on uh, next year. But, hey, nothing is set in stone at all. Uh, So we'll see what happens moving forward. But I certainly thought that uh, Sean Wade, again, who was known as a steal in this draft, who was known as a steal, uh, I thought that he could be part of future plans. Um, So this season, really with every season, I always hope that just everybody stays healthy. Uh, from top to bottom on every single roster, not just the Ravens roster, on every single roster. Uh, and I know that that unfortunately it does not happen. Injuries are a part of the game. They're the worst part of the, of the game, uh, but they are part of the game. Um, but I am uh, happy for Sean Wade. I- I'm happy that uh, he is going to get a-, a more of an opportunity. Uh, and somebody that I was talking to a little bit ago, they brought out some really, really good points uh, about Sean Wade and, and this opportunity. He's, he's coming from having been around a Marlon Humphrey, a Marcus Peters, a Jimmy Smith, Tavon Young. Those four alone, he's coming, around, coming from being around four really good corners, really good corners. And he goes from that and transitioning to the New England Patriots where he'll be around, if they get everything worked out, he'll be around Stephon Gilmore. He'll be around J.C. Jackson. So he'll be he'll he'll go from one good group to another good group, and I, I'm not sure who else they have over there at the New England Patriots uh, in the secondary, but even just those two alone, he can learn a lot from, and use both of their games and use both of their powers and combine them, because Stephon Gilmore is more the lockdown type, 
Uh, J.C. Jackson is more the ball hog type, the interception type. So it's like a Marlon Humphrey and a Marcus Peters. Same thing. So um, I'm, I'm excited to see him blossom as a cornerback. I'm excited to see him just really do his thing. And like I said, I'm, I'm happy for him, and I'm still rooting for him. I'm rooting for him, rooting for his family, and I just hope everything, I, I know everything is going to end up working out. I know everything is going to end up working out. Again, I, I still don't, I don't like the trade. Didn't like it, don't like it, but I understand it. So team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate you all understanding. And again, I appreciate you all being respectful. I love you. Y'all keep your heads up. Uh, we're looking forward to a real, real fun season this year. So I love y'all. Stay up. And we out. Shout out to Graven.